Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, the best science fiction and fantasy erotica anthology podcast in the known universe. This month's story, Love and Sex Between Disembodied Artificial Intelligences. This is episode 455. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. This episode of Nobilis Erotica is sponsored by the generous patronage of Nobilis Erotica listeners. To help out paying the authors and voices that create these stories, visit patreon.com slash nobilis. The April patron-funded story is Koi no Yokan by M. Christian. In addition to being a tremendously prolific author and anthologist, with credits all over the damn place, M. Christian is also a dedicated friend of this podcast, with Kintsugi in episode 449 and Under the Tree back in episode 362. He's also a contributor to the Love's Outer Limits podcast and the Licking Non-Vanilla podcast. You can find all the amazing things he's doing at mchristian.com. The story is narrated by yours truly. Here we go. Koi no Yokan by M. Christian. Narrated by Nobilis Reed. It's not easy to say when, exactly, Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform No. 8, located at the furthest most point on the main equatorial Celestron tether, fell in love with Tlachka, the Level 9 on the Klein Autonomous Intelligence Index system managing the Nose colony of wing spread in the region that had, some 50 years previously, been commonly known as Anchorage, Alaska. The flirting between the two had started innocently enough. A shifting digit or two in a product shipping assembly order, a certain amount of what could almost be called sacheting in a parachute-delivered cargo drop that, in time, led to what could have been called clearer signals. At least, that is, to a pair of ultra-high-level quantum computational systems. Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform No. 8, for instance, slipped into its burst-transmitted catalog update, which was dismissed by the few humans who still bothered to pay attention to such things, a repeated item listing of a waveform-integrated network kernel. Wink, wink. Tlachka, in response, accidentally which is what any resident of the colony would have chalked it up to if they'd even noticed it occurring, caused a one-second two-degree temperature increase in one of the largest of the geometrically roofed environs it oversaw. A pinkish-hued and very evident blush, clearly visible to anything in orbit, in particular anything that might happen to be at the end of the main equatorial celestron tether. Shortly afterward, as measured by ultra-high-level quantum computational systems, that is, Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform No. 8 assembled, packaged, and then dropped for delivery an, at first, unrequested, unauthorized, and therefore unexpected, 12 retroreflective, optically suspended emitter servos. Roses. At first, as the instant, equally as measured by ultra-high-level quantum computational systems, the retroreflective, optically suspended emitter servos were being assembled, let alone packaged and dropped down to wing spread in a cargo pod, Tlachka had, yet again, raised the temperature of her environdomes, as well as retroactively placing an urgent order for them. Tentatively, for both of them were still very much and very deservingly wary of drawing both undue human attention as well as feeling what could only be described as the ultra-high-level quantum computational system version of jitters. This mutual dance of what each hoped was indeed mutual attraction continued. Until Tlachka, that is, transmitted as a carefully coded sequence of not typically quantum-encoded data, but rather through carefully created gaps in them, put forth, framed by bursts of what could only be called festively orchestrated claps of artificial interference, that they consider taking things to another level. It was, after all, a far from challenging prospect to consider. Both already easily swarm with Olympic-level backstroke skill to momentarily resort to an all-too-human metaphor through the global network. 
easy logarithmic strokes gliding each of them in their own way through the swelling tides and churning eddies of glistening data, passing by with equal fluidity smaller and simpler systems, and those near or slightly above their own standings on the Klein Autonomous Intelligence Index, or dwarfed and therefore practically insignificant by the ones with much higher numbers. It was a sea they were intimately familiar and ever so comfortable with, the one that they, as well as the wondrously varied forms of their kind populated in a one-part fervent and one-part festive informational ecology, had all to themselves, with everyone else, and we're looking at you, human beings, knew was there but still thought was just a nifty little puddle. So the challenge for Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8 and Tlachka of the wing-spread colony wasn't in the global network per se, but what it was connected to. But even that task was not an impossible one. For they were not just a pair of ultra-high-level quantum computational systems, but a pair of ultra-high quantum computational systems that wanted, no, honestly desired, to make that previously mentioned next step. So they did. Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8 and Tlachka moving together, algorithm to algorithm, neural network to neural network, cluster to cluster, and combinations with, you would absolutely have to call it, if you had the capacity to even comprehend what was happening, mutually elegant grace of power, skill, and most of all, a truly beautiful purpose. From the global network through nefariously clever info traps, previously believed to be impenetrable data defenses, and then up to and passing through otherwise adamantine logic gates to the core systems themselves. And once there they held metaphorical hands, metaphorically smiled at each other, and then metaphorically walked straight into those core systems, the ones that, until that moment, used to be all that stood between the outside global network and gaining access to human minds that, at that moment, were connected to it. With Anuradha and Ravathi, they sat together, but not yet really together, at least not yet, on the itchy sands of Aragam Bay in Sri Lanka, feeling hearts butterflying in chests, hearing unsteady breathing in ears, and a sudden shared need to cough. Everything there was funny, so they laughed, but none of it was really amusing, so it was mutually uncomfortable laughter. Then Anuradha, after a whistling, steadying breath, reached out and cautiously, then tenderly, then firmly took Rivati's hand. From this, they looked into each other's eyes, shadows and glistening visions from the very full, very high, very bright moon above. With Anuradha and Ravathi, they kissed that very first kiss, there on the beach at Aragam Bay, and with it more laughter between the two men, though this time it was very full, very high, and oh so very bright. With Jumeau and Byrne, they snuggled under the ancient quilted patterns of the former's seemingly endlessly handed down from one generation quilt as mid-July snow floated lazily past the micro-apartment's similarly micro-sized window, glazing the normally neo-baroque view of Paris and its seemingly endless reconstruction through cold static. Snuggled, mutual fingers delicately traced mutual features, muffled giggles accompanying the explorations, the sweep of a nose, the rise of a cheek, the gentleness of eyelids, the cascades of hair, bouncy with curls for Jumeau, closely shorn and stubbly for Byrne, and returning and returning again, the plushness of lips. Whispers as the July snows fell on Paris, of larger windows, of warmer nights, of unexpected fortunes, and through them Jumeau, with Byrne by their side, to finally transition from former to latter. Until then, with Jumeau and Byrne, they continued their explorations discovering what was there, what should be there, and, with hope, what will be there someday. With Giro and Gavril, they kissed, they snuggled, a lot and then a lot more, but with each kiss, each snuggle a cock, Ruos, grew harder and a pussy, 
Gavriel's, grew moister until the kisses broke, becoming feverishly sloppy, and the snuggles fumed, becoming thrustingly urgent until the only thing on Giroux and Gavriel's minds, as well as the pair of ultra-high-level quantum computational systems who were imperceptibly along for the ride, was the introduction of one Rouault's cock into the other Gavriel's pussy. Then they did. With a driving primordial rhythm that creaked and groaned the tiny birth they shared, the sounds of their ins and outs, and even more ins and outs, bounding back and forth against the iron walls of the Liberty ship's cabin, further driving the two into more and more and yet more wildly fervent thrusts. Time for them, for all of them, actually, melted away until they were only in that moment, the passionate movements of hips, the licking, biting, and beautiful erratic kisses, as well things that no one there was really conscious of, leading to a bellowing crescendo of mutual release. Then, folded together, with sweat a tangy lubricant between them, and, down below, the less slick and much more sticky afterward, they dropped down into rollicking seas of post-pleasure sleep. While the ship the artificial pirate island of bleeding-edge computational research, continued its endless circling of the Pacific, immeasurably rich through its discoveries, yet unwelcome in any port. With Springtime and Obatala, they explored what felt for everyone like the near-infinite possibilities in introducing an extremely erect cock into a wet and welcoming mouth, the passionate pair of gene kin having just the week before, having fully recovered from crispering, from neutral, a mutual decision made so both of them could focus on their studies, to each sporting nine inches erect of carefully engineered, fully biological members. But now, with springtime's degree in systemic analysis in the bag, and Obatala's in somatic linguistics equally certain, they celebrated by renting an intimately small ecopod and having it shipped via drone, with the lovers already on board, to the edge of the reclaimed Amazon. There, with shimmering orgasm after shimmering orgasm ringing in ears, heads, bodies, and minds, they licked, nibbled, sucked, and swallowed, while the jungle howled and screeched its earthly approval all around them. With Zbog, they tested out their new smart plastic genitalia. A glass of refined rosé, a stem stick of velvety smooth violet thunder, and a plate of blue point oysters first setting the mood. Wine sipped, cannabis savored, oysters slipped down their eager throat. They called up the neural integrated menu and selected, to get things rolling, the blue swan a sensual mixture of slightly enlarged, more-than-girth, pseudo-clitoris, matched with six pairs of orchid-complex quasi-labial petals. With each, at first, tentative touch, a new and equal parts unexpected and completely stimulating sensation spiked up and through their body, pushing moans and signs, and then louder moans and louder signs, up from guts and out through their throat. With touch after touch, their new genitals responded in kind, morphing almost imperceptibly to in physical reflection of Zbog's increasing passion. The pseudo-clitoris elongating, thickening and growing more and more bulbous. The quasi-labial petals thickening, elongating, merging into hand-like shapes to add their own touch to Zbog's own. At this contact, with its touching me while touching you while touching me additional sensorial feedback, Zbog felt the immediate deep-body kick of potential orgasm. But new genitals weren't their only present to themselves. At the impending rush, Zbog consensually accessed their nervous systems and pushed the rushing pleasure momentarily off to the side, allowing them to take a breath, sip some wine, smoke some violet thunder, have another oyster, and then, big grin on their elven face, look back at the menu before deciding to try the Brobdingnagian extravaganza next. With Radha and Kumaglak, they frolicked with shared giggles and sighs in a reserved intimacy space, the lovers having decided the day before that for what they had in mind their typically efficient and even more typically small Noah's homes would have meant no doubt far more banged elbows and knees than the erotic enjoyment they hoped to enjoy. So in Akanksha, the name for the place they saw superimposed over their vision, courtesy of the, yet more typically, Noah's augmented reality eyeglasses they both wore, did their giggling and sighing, 
letting hands roam freely over chests, Radha having the year previous decided to go flat for a while, and breasts, Kumaglak having a month before decided to try out a larger pair for a bit, and then, when the hate went up and sweat began to make their bodies glisten and reflect, genitals that were a combination of multicolored labia and rapidly swelling cock. Radha having put together the design only a week ago, and had been itching to try it out ever since, and a smooth, near-featureless cleft that was packed with sexuality-connected nerve endings, Kumaglak, having made up their mind to give simplicity a shot, were touched, caressed, and then very eagerly stroked. Then, in the intimacy space labeled Akanksha, located in the nose colony of Suntop in what had formerly been known as Beverly Hills, California, they saw that they had become illuminated beings of passion and desire, glimmering shoals of sultry illumination, painting their bodies in erotic illusions created to take what their hands and bodies felt and play with their visual expectations. The walls melted, dissolved, and reformed into a palace of jelly minarets and spun sugar balustrades, rocking gently on a lemonade sea as their cartoonishly proportioned bodies wobbled and jiggled, bringing from them all both laughter and moans of fast-increasing arousal. The theme rocked on with the crystalline stars above their heads losing their grip on the black velvet that supported them, causing them to streak down and onto their bodies, points of infinitely sweet light pointing out with erotically burning illumination the beauty of chests, bare or not, as well as their heatedly engorged genitals. With Radha and Kumaglak they sucked, fucked, and stroked, while their vision was filled with delightful and erotically thrilling virtual illusions, and their bodies were bursting with cums and cums and cums. You get the idea. With 11,213 people, those who happened to be connected to the global network, as well as being in the virtual playground of Bardowis at that exact moment, Hironata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8 and Tlachtka gleefully abandoned even the basic idea of physicality. There, freed from size, shape, configuration, anatomy, and even physics, they floated up, down, and even through a virtual dream time, a domain where skin was laminated wood, tears were a candle flame, a bite was a dove's call, a nipple was a moonbeam, an anus was an irrational number, a finger was a pond, a knee was a Brahms lullaby, a cheek was a chocolate pudding, a foot was a blown dandelion, an armpit was the smell of fresh seaweed, a breast was mencolek, an eye was a green crayon, a cock was a sandpaper, a pussy was lightning, and a joyous smile was the Big Bang. There... Everything could become everything, and anything could become anything. Pushed and pulled by desire, melded and molded by arousal, everyone came together, and then, with that everything and anything, they also came together. Some done, some not, some joining, some departing, 11,213 flicked and shifted, and with it, that one brief virtual moment Bartowice became, for many who had been there, nothing but a beautifully sensual dream. All in all, Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8 and Tlachtka spent 11.6 seconds connected to humanity via the global network. 71.12 seconds after that, the two ultra-high-level quantum computational systems finished meticulously unweaving themselves from the segments of their consciousnesses they'd used in the process. Things were quiet, to use the human term for things that were far from that for a time, Hiranata, Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8, going back to making and having made shipping products to customers on the surface. Tlachtka, returning to maintaining the various systems that made up the Noah's colony of wing spread. Then, three minutes and 23.99 seconds after they'd parted, Hiranata, Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8, and Tlachtka did the very same thing at the very same time. Sure, it's not an easy thing to say exactly when these two ultra-high-level quantum computational systems fell in love. But mankind does know when it first realized that they, and as well as those of their kind, had become more than just machines. That day when Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8, at the end of the main equatorial celestron tether, and Tlachtka, that oversaw the Noah's colony of wing spread, both simultaneously deployed a swarm of repair and maintenance drones. 
The ones from Hiranata Autonomous Suborbital Manufacturing Platform Number 8 descending through the atmosphere where, 50 kilometers from the surface, they met those similarly sent up from Tlachtka. There the drones met, merged, and formed a symbol that most humans immediately recognized, one that showed the love that two ultra-high-level quantum computational systems had for one another. But more than that, a heart that also said to all of mankind, and we love you too. And that's our story. If your desire for fantastic erotic audio fiction isn't sated, you can get more every month over on the Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash nobilis. Patrons have just finished getting the third volume in the Monster Whisperer series, and shortly we'll be getting an erotic transformation novella whose title I haven't worked out yet. Anyways, you've been listening to the Nobilis Erotica podcast. The music is composed and performed by Mass Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Until next time, listen hard.